Hi, I'm Glenn Parry, and welcome to Case Study Research. So I'm going to go through Ben Fleiberg's paper from 2006, Five Misunderstandings About Case Study Research. This was published in Qualitative Inquiry. So in the paper, Fleiberg presents five misunderstandings, the first of which is that theoretical knowledge is somehow more valuable than practical knowledge. So case study produces practical knowledge, but context dependent knowledge and experience are required for people to become experts. People trained only in context independent rules remain forever beginners. This is a, a pretty bold statement. Case study knowledge is at the heart of student learning. Human behavior cannot be meaningfully understood just through rules. You need to understand how those rules apply in context, and that's how you learn. If we look at, say, Harvard University, you know, they teach from cases. You'll probably be, have been taught most often through case studies. Social science has not produced truly context independent theory. Cases themselves may not prove anything absolutely, but we still may learn from them. Predictive theories and universals cannot be found in the study of human affairs. Concrete, context-dependent knowledge is therefore more valuable than this vain search for predictive theories and universal truths, because all of these things are always embedded in context in practice. The second misunderstanding is that one cannot generalise from a single case. Therefore, the single case study cannot contribute to scientific development. Now, this is incorrect because it depends on the case. Now, Aristotle proposed that heavy objects would fall faster than light objects. So putting two objects together of the same weight would make them fall faster than if they were separated. Now, Galileo rejected that view and supposedly proved it wrong by dropping weights off the Tower of Pisa. This could be seen as a critical case that proves the point. But case selection is key. Selecting the most favourable case for a theory to apply and proving it false would suggest that it would be false in many cases. This idea of falsification was proposed by Karl Popper. <clears throat> if one's observation does not fit in, uh, in an environment in which it would be most favourable, then it, it must be considered invalid and revised and re rejected. Intense observation of a phenomenon is likely to yield insights and theory. Obviously, that's dependent on the problem, context and research method. A strong case may prove greater insight and be more illustrative of the theoretical proposition you're arguing for. So this rejects this first misunderstanding. The third misunderstanding is the case studies most useful for generating hypotheses, but then those hypotheses must be tested in other ways to build theory. Whilst case study is useful for generating and testing hypotheses, it's not limited to these. Cases are good at testing and demonstrating finding. Extreme cases can communicate a point clearly and effectively. Foucault's Panopticon prison, which was a prison where there was a central guard tower and the inmates didn't know if they were being watched or not. And the theory there was people's behaviour is altered if they assume they're being observed. That's an extreme case. Critical cases, such as where it looks an, an event is unlikely or an event could or should happen, yet uh, could or shouldn't happen, yet does, suggests events will happen more generally. So if you find an, an environment in which you think, well, this probably shouldn't happen here, and yet it does, you can say, well, if it shouldn't happen here and it does, it's more likely to happen in, in other areas. We can also cite Karl Popper's falsification again. If it's not true in the critical or the extreme, it is likely not to be true. Again, falsification is really about if it fails anywhere, then you've really got to revisit what your rule is, your theory. The problem with this is critical extreme case identification is difficult. You may have to rely on more experienced colleagues, your supervisor if you're doing a PhD, to help you choose your cases. Or luck, Fritzberg sought to, uh, sought a critical case in his study, but ended up with an extreme case. 
However, you're still able to publish as case study analysis, case study research allows a flexibility. Paradynamic cases highlight the general characteristics of a society group or organisation in question. They may also be critical or extreme, but they, they highlight or illustrate the paradigm. So case identification should be theory led. It's linked to the study design as well as specifics of the case that you want to look at. But really, you've got to think about, you know, what's the theory I want to test? Where does it fit well? And where might I look? But case selection is a matter of experience, intuition, and to be honest, a bit of luck. The fourth misunderstanding is that the case study contains a bias towards verification. Now this comes about because the case study allows more room for the researcher to be objective, <coughs> which leads to accusation, <coughs> accusations of verification bias, because you can choose what you look at. This ignores that case study itself has its own rigorous approach. It is not the same as other forms of study. Case study methods differ from other approaches and they are no less strict. Single cases are often targeted as being biased, but again, this overlooks the rigor of case methods. Single case studies require multiple sources of data for that triangulation. It requires it to be linked in different ways. Falsification applies and verification of theory are inherent properties of this way of studying that provide rigor. Case researchers are also a lot closer to their subject. Quantitative researchers are often unable to ask their subjects why. Why did you answer my, my, my survey question in that way? And they cannot be corrected by their objects talking back. Whereas in case studies, you can say, well, why are you doing that? And they might explain and you've realized, ah, oh, I'm actually asking the wrong question. If knowledge is gained in experiences, cases provide the most advanced form of understanding. And here we we've got a quote from Giddens, mutual knowledge shared by observer and participants whose action constitutes and reconstitutes the social word is actually what they're all about. Misunderstanding five is it's often difficult to summarize specific cases. Liverpool quotes Nietzsche is here that says <clears throat> one should not wish to divest existence of his rich ambiguity. Case studies focus on the little things. They tell a story of diversity. Researchers are exploring phenomena first and then learning the rules. You're observing what's going on. You're testing a hypothesis in a dynamic context and then trying to figure out what the rule is because the rules create the theory. This is likened to you know, exploring a city without a map. But if you do that, you tend to know your way around much better than if you were just following a map. Again, another quote. When a good narrative is over, it should be unthinkable for the bystander to say, so what? And this is very much about creating that really engaging and rich narrative that illustrates the theory. Fundamentally, Bluthberg is telling us that case study research is important. It provides exemplars and convincing narratives from which we can both teach and learn. <laughs>